Angel Clark, and once again, I'm joined by Steve Pedersen, the former head coach to the Danish team, as we watch the women singles players emerge onto court. And of course, obviously on day two, the competition heating up, and some players have already lost, some have already won. We've already had upsets for so many players. It is a must-win situation. Yeah, should, day, day two is, is crucial. Um, there's so much at stake here. Um, you play for a chance to progress to the semi-finals and uh, have, have you uh, lost your match yesterday? And it's a must-win today. Stages to the best way to semi-finals and of course the finals are Sunday. So this winning singles encounter just for example what we've been talking about because Wang Shexiao, the former champion from China yesterday afternoon lost to her teammate, the Olympic champion Li Shui in three games. Of course, her Korean opponent, Sung Ji Hyung, well, she won yesterday afternoon against Iorito Hirosi and won in two straight games. So, for the former champion, Wang Shoshian, if she were to lose this, she would be out because it would mean that she has lost two matches and her opponent would have won two matches. But we do a game to jump ahead of ourselves because, of course, Wang Chexian is a fine player. She's number three seed, having finished the Super Series ranked fourth. Of course, she was number one in the Super Series two years ago and she went on to win the Super Series finals. So she is a player that's been struggling of late, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So to Sung Ji Hyung, the 21-year-old from Seoul in South Korea, number eight on both the world ranking and the Super Series list, played 11 of the 12 Super Series tournaments, missed out on the China Masters. And with her 11 tournaments, reached three semi-finals, two quarter-finals, so a pretty consistent year all round. Well, there you can see this is the fourth meeting between these two players. But the last time they met, as you can see, was over a year ago, and that was the one occasion that Sung Jae Hyung has beaten the former world number one. Well, Sung Jae Hyung yesterday against Ivorico Hirosi, I thought was very, very impressive indeed. For Wang Xiaoxian, a long marathon match, an hour and one minute. She went down fighting 21-18 in the deciding game against the Olympic champion and number one seed, Li Shirue. So the player's just about ready for the start of this crucial match. Rampa Tata Muliana of Indonesia and Paraika Anderson of Sweden is the service judge. So Wang Shushian getting this Group A match underway for the Chinese player, the 22-year-old from Suzhou and the southeast of China in Jiangsu province. Well, it really is a must-win situation for her. But that said, she's probably very, very happy she's in these Super Series finals at all because although she qualified ranked number four at the end of year Super Series ranking list, of course, she was the third ranked Chinese player. And of course, the current world champion, Wang Yihan, has that injured right knee and therefore not able to compete. And therefore, the next player on the list was Wang Xiaoxian. So she's got a chance, and I'm quite certain she'll be trying to make the most of this opportunity at one stage she didn't think she'd have. <laughs> Just long. But, Steen, I've got to ask you about the, uh, the form of this lady of late when you look at her win-loss record over the last five Super Series tournaments and when you consider she has been world number one 
her win-loss record for the last five Super Series, five and five, and she hasn't actually lived up to her seeding since the Asian Championships back in April. No, so, so perhaps this is more than just surviving this tournament, this match here. It's about uh, making a case for herself, uh, staying uh, in the Chinese team. Um, there's some, some young, really good young Chinese players coming up and um, and like you say, Jill, uh, she hasn't really uh, had good tournaments since the Swiss Open or something like that. The last part of the year here, not being selected for the Olympics. Of course, that, um, that gets to you somehow. Your self-confidence takes a big hit when you're not selected for such a big event. And um, well, yeah. it's, it's make or break, really, isn't it? I mean, he, you, you know that the head coach, Lee Yongbo, is doubting your ability, you know, she, finished the Olympic qualifying period ranked number three in the world but they chose the number four ranked player Lee Sherway and of course she took her opportunity and won the Olympic gold medal yeah and and the, the thing is that of course uh, afterwards we see that this was a good choice but I guess everybody uh, involved in, in badminton at this level had a feeling that that would be the choice but had it been Wang Yihan been number four she still would have been chosen ahead of Wang Shishan and the same goes for Wang Xin so she simply wasn't among the three best players at the time of selection and uh, to to, uh, to still be uh, highly regarded in the Chinese team she needs to to prove herself she needs to show that her game is still good enough at this level and and that's what's interesting to see if she's uh, She's taking this challenge and, and developed her game. Yeah, it's it's interesting you say that because, I mean, um, any player, in my opinion, who's won the gold medal at the Asian Games, been world number one, uh, technically, there can't be an awful lot wrong. It just shows to me how much pressure when you do become world number one can have a detrimental in influence we were talking a little bit yesterday weren't we about you know when you become an olympic champion or a world champion then everybody's watching you analyzing you finding out how to beat you where your weaknesses are but most importantly i think it's the pressure that the player feels under every time she walks onto court she feels the pressure to win and she hasn't been dealing with that pressure well no and and, and i think had it only been Chinese players that she'd lost to, then uh, she might have had a chance, but, but she's lost to too many non-Chinese players, and I think that's really what has been decisive in, in, in not selecting her for, uh, for the big opportunity, uh, for the big games. taken from Sung Ji Hyung. And you can also say that, that her game, uh, it was w when, when she emerged on, on the world scene a couple of years ago, um, she was really fast and, and she uh, got everything back at you. Uh, but being videotaped, being analyzed, I think a lot of opponents came up with uh, solutions and, and practiced that. and. We, yeah, we discussed it yesterday that you have uh, a very short time before you're analyzed and before your opponents uh, have countermeasures. So you need to develop yourself all the time. And it just uh, proves how great players are that can stay on top for, for uh, many, many years, like uh, Linda and Li Chang Wei. Yeah. Yeah, I concur with that. Longevity in sport is a, a rare and precious thing those who manage to achieve it really are great champions let's talk a little so about this lady Sung Ji Hyung the 21 year old from South Korea of course she's here in Shenzhen fresh from victory at the Korea Grand Prix gold event but of course that meant five matches to win the title last week here she's come here she has group stages to play Presumably not to be a, a little bit jaded, but in all honesty, she's shown great form yesterday in beating Yoriko Hiroshi of Japan in two straight games. Perhaps actually just 
finding her form again because there was a period this year when Song Ji Hyung herself struggled a little. Yeah, the, both players have been struggling um, the last six months or so, uh, not being able to produce really uh, good results. And I think actually it's an advantage for her playing uh, a lot of matches uh, last week, getting some uh, confidence, winning, having 20 points in a game and, and being there winning sets, winning matches. Yeah, I can't help but wonder whether there was a huge psychological blow for Sung Ji Hyung at the Uber Cup finals in Wuhan when she was uh, playing against Wang Yihan, the world champion. She was a game and 2016 up in the second and failed to convert any of those four match points. And of course, that was the pivotal moment. That was the number one singles in the Uber Cup final. And of course, Korea were the defending champions. And I wondered mid-year whether that had had a big, big psychological effect on the young Korean. Probably, and, and, and probably also all the fuss around the Olympics, uh, her dad being the national coach, uh, losing his uh, position after after the Olympics and so on. So, yeah, there's pressure on uh, Wang Shishan, but there's definitely also pressure on, uh, on Sung Ji Hyun. Ooh. Oh, Dear. tripped. Yeah, oh goodness. You could see the hesitation. I think she's all right. I hope she's all right. Yeah. Let's have another look at that. Oh, I think actually it was more of a stumble, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Hopefully she's okay. Goodness me, we've had enough injuries this week, haven't we? It has been a long, hard season. So much preparation, so much build up towards the Olympic Games. And there's one or two players just struggling at the moment. Oh, that was going out. Uh, that's good judgment from Sun Ji Hyun. Both players actually rely on a, a quite solid playing style, playing lots of clears and drops. Um, and I have a small favorite here in, in uh, Sung Ji Hyun because I think she's capable of, uh, of uh, being a little bit more accurate, putting a little bit more pressure on the opponent than uh, Wang Shishen. Always called goods. Oh, Wang Shishen looked a little surprised about that. Good character. Well, if you think you've been hard done by by line call to immediately win the next rally. And from where we're sitting, I can see the Korean coach making signs and uh, Sung Ji Hyun that she should lift a bit higher, making it difficult for um, Wang Shishan to intercept. Shots to the back court. to the mid-game interval and it's Sung Ji Hyung that has the advantage two point advantage to be precise this Korean of course you were mentioning her father who was the head coach during the Olympic Games Sung Han Kok who of course was the uh, bronze medalist at the Asian Games back in 1986 all England semi-finalist and pretty famous mother as well Kim Yun-ya who was the last player 
to win both the singles and the doubles at the All England Championships. I hasten to add, not the same year, though. She won the singles in 1986, beating Jianping in doubles. I seem to remember playing against her in the women's doubles. And she used to partner Chung So Young. And famous parents. She's following very well in their footsteps. a lovely angle from Wang Shashian. Oh, what a return. He's looking a little bit anxious, isn't he? Yeah. Actually, uh, not so often uh, children of our famous badminton players succeed in actually uh, getting to the world top level uh, themselves. It's probably the pressure as well. Uh. I think that's true in any sport, isn't it? Yeah. Johan Cruyff great footballer, his son, Jordi, never really reached the same sort of level as his father. I suppose motor racing, Graham Hill and Damon Hill, both world champions. Yeah. Oh, you've got, got me thinking now. Yeah, Tommy Sugiato. Yep. Ichok, of course, the world champion. Copenhagen beats the M. Sui King. Really is very tight, isn't it? And both players very wary of the others overhead. You know, for trying to be a little too accurate sometimes with some of their pushes. And it's making the errors. the same area of the court we saw Chin Long make a lot of uh, very very rare overhead mistakes yesterday could be the light that is uh, somehow interfering with the sh with the stroke That's a poor judgment, so from Wang Shuxian. Yeah. The first clear from uh, Sung Ji Hyun was very, very short, so uh, perhaps that, that tricked her a bit. That this one seems a bit longer, and it was, but uh, still quite a bit into the court. Yeah, a 
good golfer there, there as well. That's often also a sign of nerves, isn't it? When you're nervous, you can't breathe properly, you don't relax, yeah. it's that tension. Crucial stage of this opening game. over her left shoulder a couple of rallies ago now moves well enough can toss that back arching the back to be able to play that shot got great control too They're both finding some extraordinary angles on the drop shots, aren't they? It was lovely from Sung Ji Hyun. A tall player, Sung Ji Hyun. You get the stats, Jill. Do you know how tall she is? Yes, indeed. 175. That's about five foot nine, isn't it? But she uses her height well. Moves very well for a girl that tall. Yeah. of the perspiration both players take the opportunity to towel down well this lady did have an extraordinary run when she was world number one At the end of 2010 through to the beginning of 2011 had a run of reaching the final of seven consecutive tournaments that she played starting at the Asian Games which of course she won the gold medal right the way through to winning the All England Championships in March the following year and I suppose after a run like that, eh, anything seems a bit of a disappointment, doesn't it? Because it was such an extraordinary run. Yeah, and, and she seemed like like the Chinese wall yeah. back then because she got everything back. Oh, that's a good smash. And then that brings her back level. Look how short the next one is. Song Ji Hyun struggling a bit. Um, we expect her to play into the wind from where she's standing. At least according to what we witnessed yesterday. Now, I was having a word with the tournament officials earlier today and I was trying to ascertain whether they'd actually got some heating on in the building. Oh, that's perfect. What a wonderful defensive backhand shot there from Wang Shoshian. Yeah, and uh, they were telling me no heating on, no air conditioning on. This is just the natural currents of, of a big, magnificent stadium that we're in is making the shuffle move yeah. slightly. Exactly, that's, uh, that's a bit of the old Wang Shishan putting uh, pressure on. Three, four, five strokes in a row. Setting up the winning opportunity. comes to an end 
one of those four points. And they've just shifted the pressure to the, their opponent, haven't they? My goodness, that was close. A good call by the line judge. long once again we're back level well I think in situations like this Steen it really does all come down to nerve doesn't it and probably also self-confidence if, if it's if self-confidence is attacked so then Sung Ji Hyun should have a little bit of an advantage so Shishan should play a lot downwards here, not risking playing too long again. that you see Sung Ji Hyung yeah, he's on his feet we need to see that again we really do no, Lampar hasn't made an overall well absolutely incense the Koreans well we're obviously not going to see it again a little bit sad that we're not seeing it because it gives you the feeling that the call might be wrong um, I think every player accepts that uh, line judges can make mistakes as well as players make mistakes so. but now we have this camera on, on the baseline so of course we should see the interesting yeah. calls and at such a crucial stage of the match too But unless the umpire overrules immediately, he can't overrule. He only can do that if he sees that a clear error has been made. Well, the fact of the situation is, it is now two game point opportunities to Wang Shexian. Now that's one well saved by Sung Ji Hyung. into that deep forehand corner looked initially, initially if the clear was going to go a little wide I don't think lengthwise it was in dispute but there's a sideways drift as well as a lengthwise drift and there the opening game 21-19 in 25 minutes to the former world number one Wang Shoshian I don't think I've ever seen her so animated, have you? No. She is under pressure. She's feeling the pressure. Mm-hmm. 
是在深圳，比赛进行中，已经在开照时关闭闪光灯，谢谢合作。I think the body language of Sanjay Kyung speaks volumes. But it's a part of sport. We cannot say with absolute certainty from our commentary position, which is exactly where you're seeing the match from. We can't say whether that shuffle was in or out, but you have to get on and play the next rally. You can't hark back to that. You've got to regroup. You've got to get yourself together mentally. But it's all very well me sitting here and saying that. It's a lot tougher to actually d implement in practice. Yeah, definitely. And it, it seems like it affected her that on the next rally. Also, the coach was very animated as well. The coaches are sitting actually opposite uh, the line judges on the baseline. A very unusual uh, position for the coaches to be in that gives them absolutely a horrible view of the court, but really good view of the baseline. Also, Wang Shishan looking to make the most of uh, the first game win and see if she can create a gap here in the beginning. Of course, we ought to mention the fact that the BWF, the Badminton World Federation, are looking into the technology of something similar to Hawkeye, but not Hawkeye, uh, where disputed line calls can be referred to an adjudicator to uh, make a decision on it but that's all for the future yeah I'm not really sure how the system is going to work but uh, for instance having these cameras on, on the lines uh, you could award the player one challenge per game or, or two per match and for instance if you challenge once and are, and are correct in your challenge you could still have two challenges exactly the same as tennis then yeah yeah There's a lot of breaks in the game anyway, so... So it wouldn't, you know, it's no. not the argument of football that goal line technology no. uh, interrupts the flow of the game. It wouldn't be the case in badminton. Oh, my goodness. That's questionable as well. Yeah, again, we've got great sight of that line. This encounter in Group A is, in all probability, this particular match will determine which of these two players is likely to go through to the semi-final stage. Because, of course, we know that Li Xiorue has played two matches. She's won two matches. Eriko Hirose has played two matches and lost two matches. So, unless something quite extraordinary happens, one suspects that it's going to be the outcome of this match who will determine who is second place within the group. Mathematically, that's not necessarily so, but as an expert in badminton, would you agree with me, Steve, that it, in all probability this will decide who joins Li Shuruwei in yeah, the semi-final? I think so too, Joe. Uh, 
especially if uh, Wang Shishen can, can uh, put it away in, in straight games. She's in a great position because I think she will um, have a good chance of beating uh, Hirosa Eriko. Um, and that means that the game she got yesterday against Li Shui will, um, will be a crucial game um, unless uh, Sung Ji Hyun can beat the Olympic uh, champion mm. tomorrow. Singles tactics. Move your opponent to the back, then fast one down the sidelines. And Song Ji Hyun should find comfort in, in the fact that um, she's been able to to keep up with uh, Wang Shishan despite this narrow loss of uh, the first game. Just quickly got her game together again. That's yeah. excellent. Took it so early, lunging forward, racket arm outstretched. It also shows one of the weaknesses in, in Wang Shishen's game. It's often a bit too predictable. No doubt she's played a big role in, in raising the standards of the Chinese ladies' singles uh, from that period uh, of... Uh, was it seven tournaments where she was really dominating? Yeah. Because the other girls had had to adapt to her playing style. They've been uh, forced to to uh, play more good shots in a row. But um, I don't think her game has developed uh, in the right direction. Uh, I think Ooh. she's going to have a tough time in the future. Yeah. That's great for trading. Just one. Following on from that, then, Steen, if you were coaching Wang Shuxian, what areas of her game would you be developing? What do you think she should have been working on? I think the problem is that she's too predictable. Um, in some ways, her, her stroke uh, selection is a bit um, restrained. So she plays all the shots that's in the book. But what about the shots that are not in the book? Where are they? Um, the flat recovery shots from uh, the deep uh, corners close to the baseline. Um, the fast smashes instead of the big smashes with a lot of arm movement and so on. Um, the flat game. So there's actually a lot of areas that uh, that she could develop, and, and she's got all the possibilities. She's still 22, and uh, I know that the Asian players they uh, peak earlier than the Europeans, but uh, there should be plenty of time. Yeah. One of the things I think is quite characteristic for her is that her left arm is very inactive uh, during play. Very often is. Why is that such a Why is that such a problem? 
I, I don't know if it's a problem. It's just very characteristic you know, for her that it's not really, um, she, she isn't using it as a, a sort of balance or to help the other strokes. Wow, that was a good shot. Yeah. Do you think her lack of use of the of the left arm means that on her overheads struggles to get the deception? I'm thinking in comparison to one of your former players, Tina Bowne, who has a very exaggerated shoulder turn. And I sit and watch the Dane, and I still can't see which way she's going to hit the shuffle because of that exaggerated turn. You've got your left arm down by your side. You tend to be a little more square on as you're hitting yeah. the shuffle. And, and you don't get this uh, shoulder movement. Uh, perhaps it helps you in other areas of the yeah. game, but um, but you don't get that shoulder movement. And, and I think her, her technique, her, her racket technique, is a bit characteristic. Uh, of course, she can she can make all the necessary shots. Otherwise, she don't win the Olympics and gets to be the world number one. But um, also in, in in the flat game, uh, it's quite hard. Uh, sometimes you need to use the other arm as a, as a counterweight. Yeah. great to see some of these net shots uh, from the camera that we've got uh, covering the net because uh, where, from where we're sitting it's, it's a bit difficult to see just how close they are to the net. on that one. Well, this youngster from Korea, one of the whole group of young women singles players throughout the world from Japan, Thailand, Taipei, Korea, India, that I think are the future of women's singles and, um, and players that will really, really challenge the dominance of Chinese women's singles players. And ladies single, perhaps the, the strongest uh, category right now. I had lunch with uh, Tina Bowen a couple of days ago, and she said, in the Super Series, there are no soft spots. There's no easy matches. And if you look at, for instance, men's singles, um, I think we only have four of the top ten in the world ranking playing this tournament. Mm. Uh, and, and there's a few soft spots even in the first round there. So, uh, ladies single, extremely uh, competitive. That shot has been working great for her. The cross smash from the backhand side. just wide thought for a moment Wang Shoshian was going to play that going to have to be awfully careful right now because uh, this lady is just on a bit of a roll. Point 
cushion now. Ah, oh, there we go. Exactly what you asked for, Steen. Beautiful indication of just how tight to the net that net shot was. Well, I just sense that Sung Ji Hyung really needed a little run of points there, and it didn't happen. How she controls that shot when it's gone past her, arching her back. It reminds me a bit of uh, Miao Dina. Absolutely. Had the same ability to hit very accurate shots behind yeah. her back. Miao Dina, of course, twice Olympic silver medalist in Atlanta in 1996 and then in 2004 in Athens. And of course, her two Olympic silver medals representing two different countries, the country of her birth, Indonesia, and then the Netherlands, her adopted country. It's a long break between the rallies here. And it has to be said, I think Wang Shoshian does have uh, a bit of a reputation on the circuit for sometimes taking really too long in between rallies. Is that a fair comment, or am I being a little harsh? No, I think it was, of course, it was a very good rally, so yeah. So um, we could be a little bit large there, but in general, we see matches. Uh, taking a uh, very, very long time. I, I timed a men's doubles match during the Denmark Premier Series, and, and it, the match was one hour and 20 minutes, and there was one hour of breaks in it, and 20 minutes of, of play. So uh, I think yeah, that's it's not something that, that the BWF could look into as well. That's uh, a nice rally again. Yeah, look at the body language. She took a long time after that rally, a long rally a, a couple of points ago. Bent over double after that rally and wanting a shuffle change. That wastes a little more time now, wiping the perspiration from the brow. In fact, they're both taking as long as each other. But I agree with you. I think it's an area that BWF need to look at. And they were very strict when they started this 21-point uh, scoring system. No breaks were allowed, and the towel was to be uh, close to the line, so you could just wipe yourself quickly. Yeah. No, she really didn't move for this at all, did she?
This was a very, very short rally and it's been 20 seconds since it ended. 25. Well, time is running out for Sung Jae Hyung. Number three seed, just three points away from registering her first win in the Super Series finals. rally oh my goodness that was so important for Sanji Hyung seemed to be under pressure for so long in the early stages of that rally yeah, both players taking the opportunity to tell down I think Steen's got his stopwatch on this. Yeah, but I've forgotten what I started. Yeah. <laughs> I just know that it's a very long time, and I can't understand why the umpire allows the loser of the rally to ask for a towel down. Gives you the opportunity to, to break the opponent's rhythm, but I guess both players are, are feeling quite tired. Mm. 48 minutes this match has been yeah. in progress so far. And I think it's about a minute since the last rally uh, finished. Seventy seconds. Goodness, well, the line judge was awfully slow to actually indicate that it was wide, but it was wide by some considerable margin. Yeah, clearly wide. Oh, she's done well, has the Korean. Hanging in there. This is a big, big point. Oh my goodness me, that must have been close. Well, now Wang Shoshian joining in with the calls just showing and indicating to her opponent that she thought it was long by some considerable margin once again it would be nice to have that confirmed there we go Is telling me eighteen, nineteen, thirty seconds. Good. Now 
the umpire's correcting it, and I think it's wrong. Oh, my goodness me, it's all happening now. One hour, one, Shashan. Can't understand the call. I think he's overruled the wrong one. What do you think? Yeah. I tend to agree with you. I thought that caught the line. Well. If he should overrule one, it definitely was that line because that's the line he can actually see. He can't yeah. see the one that sort of decided the first game because it was way too far away from him. Good net exchange. of the players feeling the pace of that terrific rally and this final smash straight down the line played to perfection and with it what a fantastic time to play yeah a rally like this perhaps the best rally of the whole match yeah So another one minute break. One ten, seventy seconds again. Oh, Excellent net game. winner of the Super Series finals two years ago has beaten Sun Jae Kyung to record her first victory in Group A on day two of competition here at the Super Series finals. Now oh, it had controversy, it had brilliance, it had nerves. All in all, an intriguing match. But the victory goes to Wang Shexian of China. 21-19, 21-19 in 54 minutes of play.